Basic zombies are basic. Their job is to be basic, as their name implies. They are the standard threat you fight in every single level, come in high numbers, and mostly serve to allow every world and level to have a reasonable early game. They have no ability. They have nothing notable or interesting about them, but are one of the few zombies that appear in every single world, and have the numbers to match. Coneheads are similarly global enemies, but have a lot more HP and are much rarer in terms of numbers. Compared to basics, they are capable of countering certain extremely low damage attackers, but are far weaker against instant kills like Potato Mine. They exist to add depth into the early game, and to offer a global variety to all worlds, and offering another option for early game spawns. Bucketheads are also global enemies, and are even tankier than Coneheads. They are the extreme case in encouraging instant kills, they are not necessarily extremely dangerous, but if you aren't careful, they can get out of hand fast due to their high HP and can support other, more dangerous threats well. They offer an alternative mid to late game threat in some worlds, and ensures that every single world has, at minimum, a single high HP threat to work with. Brickheads, and their variants, are exclusive to expansion levels, and are the tankiest normal zombie in the game. These zombies show up rarely, but are nearly indestructible having almost twice the HP of a Buckethead. They are designed to encourage level plants, which can tear down their increased HP more reliably than non-level plants, though Incers can do just as well. Some worlds need Brickheads to be tanky, some worlds already have tanks that have similar HP. Sometimes they do something useful, sometimes they exist out of a formality. Flag Zombies are cute references to a certain YouTube channel. Outside of that, they can only spawn once on each huge wave, and have the stats of a basic, with zero additional differences. They are not a problem, do not appear on seed select, and will always spawn on a random lane. They exist to be cute, ultimately, rather than be a real threat. Rally Zombies are a direct upgrade to Flag Zombies, and appear in expansions exclusively. They spawn identically, but have much more improved stats, including speed and eat DPS. They can be an actual threat when they spawn. Again, encouraging level plants to kill them quickly before they tear through a large chunk of your defense. Imps are cannon fodder expressly made for zombies to lob up front and everywhere. Stat-wise, they are identical to basics, except move a little faster. They are sometimes used as a substitute for basics, but usually they are just going to be flung far closer than basics are ever going to be. The threats imps impose are usually going to be based on how they enter the field. They are usually non issue by themselves and can safely be ignored. Gargantuas are the opposite of imps. They have huge amounts of HP and instantly destroy plants, even being faster than normal zombies are, while tanking two instant kills. When they get to low HP, they will also fling their imp onto column 3 to deal some additional damage. Gargantuas are rare to find and usually don't show up in huge numbers. They mechanically tend to lure away instant kills from elsewhere to deal with them, acting as an instant magnet to susceptible threats who would be easy to kill otherwise. These Gargantuas are uniquely slower than most other Garg variants. While this does make them weaker, they are exclusively seen in Vase Breaker, mostly in Endless, where they exist to throw a wrench into your plants and force you to dip into your sun supply. They are likely to become only more dangerous the longer you go, ensuring Vase Breaker isn't, in fact, endless. Ra zombies are the first zombie you encounter in ancient Egypt, and are the first special zombie you encounter in the entire game. They can collect sun from anywhere on screen, but do so slowly, and only once they land. Ra zombies are mostly there to introduce the play to the concept of zombies having unique abilities. They are barely a threat. Camel zombies spawn in large groups, and each have 400 HP total, or in between a basic and a conus. This does not make them a huge threat, however. They exist to further ease of play into how specials work, note how minor they really are, but are mostly there to introduce a certain plant. Explorer is the first special zombie that can be a real threat. Explorers move fast and will instantly destroy plants that touch their flame, but also don't have a lot of HP. They aren't threatening if they come alone, but behind buckets are clumps of camels, can sneak through and counter your walls. They are a fast early game threat that is intended to work well with the other two zombies we haven't talked about yet. You can also counter them with freezing or chilling plants, such as Snowpea or Iceberg. You can argue this is done to sell Snowpea if you so wish. Torchlight is an expansion exclusive zombie, which is like Explorer, just way more dangerous. Now moving faster and with increased health. Unlike normal Explorer, they are designed to force chilling plants and level plants, due to both a high speed 
decently high HP and dangerous ability. If you see a torchlight, a counter must be brought, otherwise you will simply lose. Tomb Raider throws bones out onto the fields, each creating additional graves that can tank damage. This can help make Explorer more dangerous, and serve as a backline threat to add more HP to the fields. They are designed to further encourage area's effects, or something to bypass the graves they spawn, though in practice raw damage can often be just enough. They are also designed to encourage Grave Buster to be used more, by spawning additional targets for them to work on. Pharaoh Zombie is intended to be a tanky threat in Ancient Egypt. It has slightly more HP than a Buckethead does, and when low on HP, will rush forward like a newspaper zombie, though it does not have an increased eat DPS. It tanks for both Tomb Raider and Explorer, allowing both of them to trigger their abilities better and harder. The Zomboss Sphinxinator is a Cyclops Zomboss that serves as the final boss for Ancient Egypt. It jumps around a field and summons zombies, fires missiles, and charges lanes to remove plants. The most unique thing about this fight is that the missiles spawn bones. It's the first boss in the game after all, so it's more so there to get you used to how boss fights will work in PC2, which is its main purpose. Swashbuckler is the first special in Pyrus Seas you encounter, and has a fairly simple role. An alt basic type that can attack on lanes without planks. Swings onto column 5, sure, but he only really has the HP of a basic. He forces offense onto those lanes so you can't just place nothing on those, and can also spawn on other lanes as part of a raiding party, serving as an early game threat that attacks from the middle of a lawn. Seagull serves a similar role to Swashbuckler, applying pressure to non plank lanes. They have moderate HP and, more notably, have pretty fast speed. Pelican is a seagull with increased speed, made for the expansions. They don't have any other real changes, though with Blover unlocked, you could argue if Pelican's job is to force that plant, which will completely remove it from being a threat ever. Though unlike other veterans, this one is very tame. Barrel Roller is a designated tank zombie in Pirate Seeds, for Barrel itself having buggered at HP, and a practical insta-kill. The Barrel can touch Spike with a Spike Rock, destroying the barrel in the process, and both catapults and piercing plants can hit the barrel roller behind. The barrel destruction will spawn some imps as well. Overall, though, barrel roller heavily encourages you to bring AoE to deal with it quickly and ensure the imps aren't a problem. Imp Cannon is a stationary zombie that will spawn imps constantly, eventually exploding into a barrage of imps all over the field if you don't kill it in time. It's only as tanky as a Conet, however so it's usually not too hard to kill it before it explodes. Still, the empty spawns aims to overwhelm a player, and like Barrel Roller, they encourage area of effects. Pirate Captains are slow-moving zombies that summon a parrot occasionally. This parrot will target the furthest right plant in a random lane, float above it, then take it if it's still alive after a few seconds. It is capable of instantly killing plants, and doesn't really care for their HP, but if a parrot dies, it will never respawn needing another captain to appear. Parrots have somewhat low HP, but they don't last long, and especially in early game, they can be very overwhelming and grab several plants. The Zombot Plankwalker is a pirate sea's boss, and is extremely similar to the last boss. The main difference is an additional attack where it will summon imps to fly everywhere, essentially acting as an imp can explosion. You can otherwise deal with it as normal. Cowboy basics have hats. These don't actually do anything, but are cool, and shall be brought up, as a result. Prospector Zombie is the first real special zombie in Wild West, acting as a continuation of Digger Zombie. After a while of moving normally, he will explode and jump behind your plants, then walk right off screen. However, Chilling will disable this explosion, and they will be stunned. They exist to apply immediate pressure onto the player, though with plenty of counters provided to deal with them both before and after they jump. Pianist Zombie moves slowly but has relatively high HP, with a unique ability to cause all basics on screen to start changing lanes constantly. This allows basics to dodge particularly strong plants and lanes, and become harder to track. This works especially well with minecarts, which will make every lane having high DPS a challenge, but also gives you a moving option to counter these zombies. Poncho Zombie has two variants. Once you deal a certain amount of damage, the poncho will fall off, revealing either a grate or nothing at all. With a grate, Poncho Zombie has the same amount of health as a Buggerhead. Without it, they have barely more HP than a basic zombie, and a poncho itself is easy to reveal. 
these zombies can prove a serious issue if you let them, hiding large amounts of HP in some cases. They serve to be a more spammable special zombie that can overwhelm you, but is overall a more minor threat. Chicken Wrangler releases a huge swarm of chickens when it touches a plant, or takes sufficient damage. These chickens move incredibly fast, have reasonably high damage towards plants, but have incredibly low HP. Chicken Wrangler is designed to force piercing plants, and help encounter walls to allow other basics and a later zombie, Bulls, to bypass, and force some form of AoE to help Dancing Buggers and Great Ponchos to get past those same walls. Zombie Bull has a short charge up time, before charging right into your front line, filling an imp deep into your defense. They have a lot of HP as well, but are completely countered by Tolmut, which will block the imp throw. These can spawn fairly rapidly due to the otherwise low impact, and can swarm your front line after. They encourage careful use of minecarts to cause them to trigger early, and have a solid amount of HP to encourage any form of walling against them. Rodeo Legend is a veteran version of Bull Zombie. They don't have significantly increased health, but do have much faster speed, and will deal damage with its charge, one-shotting most plants and dealing heavy damage to those that don't get one-shot. It will also do increased biting damage, and will charge several times. This zombie is designed to encourage leveling through raw power, and to heavily encourage stallers to stun you. The Zombot War Wagon is, again, very similar to the Priya 2 bosses. It will shoot a lot of missiles at the minecart tracks, however, this is the only unique element of the fight. He serves as the final boss of Wild West, and while he does have a notable fight in the expansion, we are not talking about said fight. This boss shouldn't realistically be a problem under normal circumstances. Frostbite K basics, and every zombie in the world, have an immunity to freezing effects, and will instead be chilled. That they should be resistant to the effects during the Ice Age, but it might also just be used to encourage Stunion a bit more. Blockhead zombies are a variant on the basic trio, having even more HP than a Buckethead. Despite this, however, they are still susceptible to instant kills, further encouraging those. They exist to give Frostbite Cave some additional HP, as the world does notably lack it without him. Hunter Zombie is the first real special of Frostbite Caves. They throw snowballs from time to time, building up frost on plants, needing to hit all three shots in order to fully freeze the plants. They do nothing to plants that can heat themselves or are frost immune. They move slowly and can stack up, aiming to be an early mid-game menace that can freeze plants from a safe distance. Yeti Imps are slightly slower than other Imp types. This is likely for reasons I will cover later. Dodo Riders are fast-moving zombies that can fly over slider tiles. They exist to give those lanes a consistent threat that can attack behind them, and make them somewhat less reliable. They have mediocre HP and can consistently come in high numbers, so they can be considered a problem from time to time. Troglobite Zombie pushes three ice blocks onto the field, each containing a Yeti Imp. It will push very quickly until all ice blocks are on the field, where it will slow down significantly, and it can't push ice blocks past sliders. It will push additional ice blocks ahead of it, plant or zombie. Troglobite's job is to synergize with the ice blocks that start the game onto the field, and punish the player for leaving any plants frozen. The imps in the ice blocks themselves likely won't be notable, and the zombie itself is very weak in terms of both HP and speed. Weasel Hoarder is a chicken wrangler variant. It can't activate by eating plants, and when the weasels are released, they have much more HP each, and can usually tank a single attack, in exchange for there being far less of them. I assume this was done to punish pedipults, who will struggle to deal with them, or to work with plants being frozen, so the weasels can rush right through them at high speeds. Sloth Gargantuas fire three imps when damaged, one at each quarter HP, all at column three. While these imps do move slower, they do still eat at full speed, which can cause notable problems for plants at column three. This, combined with sliders, can cause imps to be bombarded all over the screen across several lanes, acting as a more significant threat to round out a world of fairly minor threats. The Zombot Tuskmaster 10,000 BC, beyond being a mouthful, is a mammoth Zombot that ends off a world. It's a defensively oriented Zombot, sending frozen winds down lanes, creating ice blocks that contain zombies, and being undamageable until the ice shield has been destroyed. This boss takes longer than other Zombots, but is extremely defensive, so can't do much in their fights, beyond stalling. 
Lost Pilot Zombie is the first special in Lost City. He drops from the sky into your lawn during a parachute rain ambush. These will swarm the entire field and serve as moderate HP. They drop down soon after, then move forward. They apply immediate pressure and aim to remove some of your plans to allow the other zombies to appear. They also do a good job of ensuring deep gold tiles can remain contested throughout the game. Excavator Zombie is immune to all straight shot projectiles, taking absolutely no damage. They will also use a shovel to push plants ahead of them to two or so tiles behind them. They exist to combo nicely with the next zombie, but also serve as a solid and relatively fast moving threat. They counter walls well, and are somewhat a priority target while remaining very spammable. Parasol Zombie blocks all lobbing projectiles. Unlike Excavator, this will fully negate the projectile entirely, and deny it from a dealing additional splash damage. Its job is to synergize with Excavator, encouraging setups that rely on both, or pierce through both with a single plant. Bug Zombie is similar to Excavator, though they lack an immunity. They are a fast moving zombie that carries a zombie beneath, flying over most plants. On death, that zombie will be dropped, being either a basic, cone head, or bucket head. They can be destroyed if blow for a hurricane, which is likely your best shot. These zombies are fast and numerous, and like Excavator, serve as a solid and somewhat rushy threat especially impactful during the early game. Importer has moderate HP, again, in between a basic and a conad. He moves slower than a normal imp, but carries a backpack. If he reaches a gold tile, he will instantly die and spawn a tent on that tile, which will spawn basics, conads, and bucket heads. If they die beforehand, however, they will simply drop their bag behind them as a grid item. Importer serves as the main tug of war with gold tiles, and aims to make the gimmick more interesting then purely a huge benefit for the player. Relic Hunter Zombie is a variant of Swashbuckler. He will spawn on a random column between 4 and 6, and has much more improved HP in exchange for being a lot slower. Relic Hunter is the most dangerous and rapid threat in Lost City, and due to the way they spawn, they are one of the few zombies capable of making serious progress in the mid to late game. Crystal Skull is a ranged zombie that will instantly destroy most normal HP plants, and deals heavy damage to walls. They have low HP, and will steal some sun in order to charge faster. They are one of the main causes of Lost City being capable of reclaiming land for gold tiles, as these lasers are quite effective at removing huge piles of plants, if you play into them. They especially work well with Importer, where that little extra distance could result in a dangerous tent being spawned, closer than you may like. The Zombot Aerostatic Gondor is the final boss of Lost City. It utilizes trap tiles to deal damage to your plants, and spawns Lost Pilots as an ambush, or a swarm of normal zombies beneath it. This boss will fly around various lanes, and will attempt to trigger the boulder tiles to clear out large amounts of your plants. You should focus on trying to keep a stable defense against it as a result. Jetpack Zombies are the first special in Far Future. They have low HP, don't move particularly fast, but can avoid plants. They tend to come in swarms, to the point that a later zombie will literally just spawn them in swarms. They aren't particularly dangerous, but they are immune to most early game plants, which can prove an issue if you're relying on potato mine or chili bean. Otherwise, they exist to be swarmed early game, and to act as a spamble threat to a world with a lot of heavy stuff. Blastronaut is a jetpack veteran, and exists to force Blover and basically nothing else. They are unholy fast, and while they aren't the most tanky, there is still enough HP provided in the world itself for this to be a serious issue. Don't bother with any other counter, you are forced to use Blover. If Blover is banned or absent, they are a priority threat that can make you instantly lose games. Shield Zombies are the lightest real mech zombie type. They have decent HP, but more notably, create the shields. Hitting the shield will absorb damage and its splash, making projectiles notably weaker against it. The shield will come back if the shield zombie itself doesn't die after, so when the shield goes down, the zombie must be killed, otherwise the HP will just simply remain. Shield Zombies have incredible synergy with each other, needing heavy damage output to remove, so is that provided by a plant food effect, provided through Power Tile. Bug Bot Imps have slightly improved HP over normal Imps. Most notably, however, they can come as part of a Bot Swarm ambush, where they will arrive in lines to pepper all lanes with a Bot Swarm of, well, Imps. This ambush can pose a big threat early game, due to spawning close to your defenses, but outside of the early game, this ambush isn't likely to be a huge deal. Cone Mech is very simple. 
It's a zombie with an insane amount of HP. Comex are essentially brickheads with a little extra HP, and being fully resistant to armor peers and instant kills, such as Chili Bean or Cherry Ball. This can make it pretty difficult to remove, and combined with the rest of the high HP threats, can quickly form an unbreakable wall, where later mechs can start to pull off their abilities in relative safety. Disco Mech is a slow moving mech that, like the others, has a huge pile of HP with an additional ability, where they will spawn four jetpack zombies around them. These work well as a meat shield to cover for the other high HP frecks, giving a reason for air effect plants beyond shield zombie. They're also very slow, so with their HP they can last a while and sack up. This can result in a loss in itself, but also means they can be a slow burn, without much immediate pressure, giving an alternate lose condition. Football mechs are one of the biggest threats in the world. If given a chance, they are one of the few enemies in Far Future that can pose a significant threat without numbers. They have a large HP pool like the other mechs, are relatively fast to the size, and will push all plants in the lane back one space. This can pose a significant threat if your plants are out of position, and is the second biggest heavy threat that we'll need to be contended with. Gargantua Prime is a major rework to Gargantua, changing it into a ranged threat. It moves slower and attacks at a different speed to other Gargantuas, resulting in it having a very different series of mechanics and counterplay. Gargantua Prime's laser beam makes it capable of destroying plants from a range, thus making them the ultimate instiller. They must die, otherwise you will instead. But Tomorrowtron is another Cyclops. This one acts as the final boss of Far Future, where it can destroy power tiles. The fight otherwise plays exactly the same as the other Cyclops Zombots. It will be the last Cyclops for now. The first Dark Ages special zombie is Knight, working similarly to Blockhead Zombie. It's relatively tanky, especially for a Knight world, but can be countered by Magnetroom. It's intended to help provide a counter to AoE plants, make Necromancy more dangerous, and gives Sunbeam and Magnetroom better usage in the world. They are not a huge threat alone, however, and can be one-shot in the normal ways. Just a zombie has moderate HP and a reasonable speed, and is immune to all conventional projectiles. They will move faster when hit by these, and will reflect a projectile after a few seconds to attack the plants that attacked it. These deal full projectile damage, though plant damage is less than zombie damage. Still, this zombie encourages a full deck that can't trigger it. They are meant to limit your options to help other threats become more challenging in the world. Wizard zombies are a major ranged threat, having low HP but a powerful ability to transform plants into sheep, disabling them outright until the wizards die. They are also very slow, allowing them to make full usage of the large HP pools of this world allowing zombies like Jethra and Knight to breach walls. They are the single most dangerous zombie in this world, and must be taken seriously. As a result, King Zombie is the last true special in this world, turning normal zombies into night zombies. They have quite a lot of HP, but can't move lasting forever if you aren't running enough piercing or air effects. They have potential to be extremely dangerous, but are very vulnerable to getting caught in stray instant plants. Still, they serve as the main late game threat in Dark Ages, ensuring relatively long levels don't become extremely one note. Dragon Imp is technically a zombie that exists. They are immune to fire damage for some purpose I don't actually know. They mostly just exist in the Zombot fight as part of a fireball attack, but I'm not sure how relevant that really is. I presume this zombie is a leftover from previous concepts, considering both Fire P and Pepperpult were confirmed to be drawn up and conceived during this world's development. The Zombot Dark Dragon is a boss fight against a giant robot dragon. The head will change lanes and act like a cyclops, but will burn down lanes to remove all plants in them. It will shoot fireballs across the field summoning imps and making tiles implantable for a temporary amount of time. It will summon zombies very rapidly, but is entirely countered by Magnetroom, who will be boosted usually in encounters with it. It's the final boss of Dark Ages, wrapping up the world the same way as any other Zomboss does. Punk Zombie is the first special of Neon Mixtape Tour. They have fast speed, especially considering that they gain a further speed boost when active from Punk Jam itself, and will trigger exclusively in said jam. They will not eat plants, instead knocking them back or tossing them off a lawn. With a high speed but low HP, they act as a resident early game nuisance, capable of rushing you down early game fast, 
if you aren't prepared to counter them. Glitter Zombie activates during Pop Jam, which will slow all zombies down. During this, Glitter will make all zombies behind it immune to all damage for as long as she lives, and removing all conditions the zombies may be affected with. She only has 490 HP and will be spawned often. They will destroy plants they make contact with. They are meant to counter AoE plants, but due to the jam making all zombies slower, and her really low HP for this role, I wouldn't say they do a great job at it. Still, she is not to be underestimated. Mech Zombie activates during Rap Jam, which will have no effect on zombie speed. While active, they will swing their microphone in a 3 times 3 area, dealing extremely heavy damage to all plants in that range. They will destroy walls quickly, and will destroy most normal plants immediately, but once again lacks the HP that you usually would expect. If they sneak through mid-game, however, they can be extremely punishing. Hair Metal Gargantua is next in the list, and is the single biggest threat in the Mixed Ape Tour. They activate during Metal Jam, providing a minor speed boost to all zombies, but will also gain a new ability, making each smash attack they do fire a projectile, which will also instantly kill most plants. The good news is that most normal levels will allow you to kill them before Metal Jam activates, or offer a way to remove a jam quickly. The bad news is that I say most levels, and not all. Hair Metal Gargantuas are a strict kill on site threat, making the late game of Neon Mix 8 Tour entirely by themselves. Never let them escape your gaze. Breakdancers activate during Rap Jam, like Mix Zombies. They gain increased speed, and will knock zombies forward, including each other. In high numbers, these zombies can kick high priority threats towards you at incredibly fast speeds, resulting in threats like MCs and Gargantuas to get very close to trigger their abilities. Similarly to Gargantuas, these are often a kill on sight threat, as when stacked they can synergize with each other for terrifying effects. They serve as a core source of synergy in this world, being a very potent support zombie. Arcade zombies activate during 8-bit jam. They will push arcade machines, which have a huge 1.2k HP each, or almost at Buggerhead. During their jam, this arcade machine will spawn 8-bit zombies rapidly, from normal zombies to coneheads to Bucketheads. These zombies have the exact same stats as their normal counterparts. The zombie as a whole aims to overwhelm you with raw numbers and HP, being really the only reason air effect cannot work against absolutely every zombie around here. Boombox Zombie will trigger during any jam. They will do nothing until they reach Column 6, where they will stop the jam temporarily and stun all the plants on the field. This threat is immediate, and can instantly make a bad situation worse, but disabling jams gives you a bit of leeway. They will mostly trigger in Punk and Metal Jam, due to the speed boost, Disabling that speed boost for 8 seconds can mean the difference between life and death sometimes. They are the only threat that doesn't care for the jam to activate, but are also usually the most dangerous, allowing the zombies to bypass your plans for a significant amount of time. The Zombod Multi-Stage Masher is the final boss of Mean Mystic Tour, and among the most dangerous. It fires missiles in its speakers, which can also lane clear occasionally, and dealing passive damage around them. Each phase is based around a specific jam, with the final phase being based around Metal Jam, which is exactly as dangerous as you think it is. This boss fight is among the most deadly in the game, having an insane final phase that is more than likely to catch you off guard. Jurassic Marsh's basic trio all have unique stats. Basics move faster with higher E DPS. Coneheads are slightly faster with no increased E TPS, while Bucketheads are slightly slower. This extends the Fossil Head and Imp, the former having higher HP but being even slower, and the latter having half HP but being extremely fast. I imagine this is a case to give a world something to actually do, as it otherwise lacks specials. Most of this world is focused around the dinosaurs, which are not going to be talked about in this video. Speaking of which, Bully Zombie. It has the same HP as a Buckethead, and is immune to specifically Primal Peacher and Tumbleweed, and nothing else. This zombie exists exclusively to counter these two targets and nothing else, and its ability can more or less be ignored. I presume they exist to not make Primal Pea Shooter completely dominate the world. Jurassic Rock Puncher is a bully veteran, and functions somewhat as a mini gargantua. They will instantly destroy plants without eating them, while leaving timed creators behind when they do so. They have 2.4k HP, are about two thirds of a full gargantua, and have resistance to instant plants as a result. As a veteran, they only exist in the expansion levels, and are designed to encourage leveling as with everything else in an expansion. 
The Jurassic Gargantua is similar to the rest of the basics and that is stats are shuffled. It's far slower than other Gargantuas, but has 1.5 times more HP. This works better with the dinosaurs than a normal Gargantua, and gives it additional immunity to instant plants. Jurassic Gargantuas are the only real remaining threat in this world, as a result. The Zombot Dinotronic Mechasaur is the final boss of Jurassic Marsh. This boss will fire laser beams down lanes to clear them, and summons dinosaurs and zombies behind them. This fight is otherwise a fairly standard ordeal, acting as a less complex Dragon Zomboss. This fight shouldn't be a serious issue by this time. Snorkel is the first special of Big Wave Beach, and are returning from PvZ1, with nearly identical functionality. While in water, they cannot be hit unless they're eating a plant. Catapult plants will get around this weakness. If they exit the water, they lose this ability unless the tide moves further forward to submerge them again. They serve as the weakest special in this world, but combo well with the tide itself. Thematically works well for the low tide, and synergizes with Surfer and Octa well by encouraging plants they counter. Surfer zombies have two forms. When surfing, they will ignore all plants, moving at an insanely fast speed. When landing at the end of a the tide, they'll hold their surfboard above their head. Killing them at this point will make them place down a surfboard at a nearby plant, but they will also do this manually if they reach a plant. Their surfboard will instantly kill any plant, and will act somewhat as a gravestone. Surfer is an insanely rushy friend Big Wave Beach, adding a lot to the high-speed nature of the world as a whole. Fisherman Zombie is a stationary zombie that functions as a range threat in Big Wave Beach. They'll throw out hooks on occasion, that will drag back plants on the front line, likely into water. They have good HP too and will do this quickly, but in recent months this zombies has received various nerves to what exactly they will hook. Now grabbing onto lily pads. This zombie can often become the most dangerous threat in this world, forcing plants out of position and into either water or becoming closer to the zombie hordes. They are the definition of an instiller. If they don't die immediately, they will cause significant problems. Octo zombies are an alternate range threat in Big Way Beach. They move slowly, are decently tanky, and act similarly to Wizard Zombie. They disable plants at range, allowing zombies to walk through them. This can result in a kill if a plant is over water and the lily pad gets eaten. The only way for them to break free is for a huge chunk of damage to hit the plants, serving similarly to a gravestone in terms of HP as well. Octo Zombies can apply huge amounts of pressure in the long run, but Sharkatronic Sub is the final boss of Big Way Beach. It will summon sharks to eat lily pads and plants on top, suck in every plant across two lanes, and summon zombies from below the ocean. Using Tangle Kelp when inhales will stun the Zombot, solving the inhale, though some plants may still be slightly moved forward. This Zombot is fairly standard among the boss fights. Play well, and it shouldn't be a huge challenge. Newspaper Zombie is the first special in modern day, based on the newspaper zombie from Plant vs. Zombies 1. They have a newspaper in their hands. When it is destroyed, the zombie will gain incredibly high speed and eat DPS. Catapults must hit the newspaper before the zombie. The zombie is intended to be a rushdown threat, capable of taking mowers and clearing out well-defended lanes in the mid-game. Sunday's Edition is a newspaper zombie veteran. It has no additional abilities, but has an absurd amount of eat DPS when enraged, dealing 1.5k damage a second. It's a bigger and badder newspaper zombie, serving to encourage leveling, the same way as every other veteran. If you don't have leveling, careful usage of cherry bombs and chili beans might be required. Balloon Zombie returns from PUZ1, but has no similarities mechanically. It acts as a more standard flying zombie, similar to Bug Zombie. It moves pretty fast, is relatively tanky, and will ignore all plants on the ground instead flying over every plant except tall nuts. It's a pretty filler threat, but being immune to some early game plants can be a serious issue, especially considering its okay health and okay speed. Also zombies are based on football zombies from PvZ1, but also are wholly new. They have a large amount of HP, and are lightning fast when swarmed. It will instantly destroy the first plant it runs into, with the same properties as a Gargantua Smash. The zombie will then slow down significantly. This zombie is the fastest way the game can destroy a stable defense, and encourages faster reactions to prevent the hits, no matter what stage of the game you're at. And finally, Super Fan Imp. Super Fan Imp will detonate in the first three columns, but doesn't eat particularly fast enough to reach there. Instead, all stars running in the lane will fling them to the first three columns when they reach them, as they will otherwise basically never trigger. They exist to amplify all stars' role, but don't really do much alone. As a solo zombie, they have absolutely zero role, which is probably the funniest possible way to end off this video. Bit of a different style from my usual stuff, but eh, variety's fun, and I hope you enjoyed this 
particularly long video. I've been looking to writing some scripts less super focused on PC2, so if this video does well, I could see myself doing similar videos to this on various other games. If you'd want that, let me know. This video took way longer than it should have, but whatever. It's done now. I've got a few scripts in development that I think should be fun to watch, so hold your breath, alright? At this point, this channel is shifting more so to quality of a quantity, or at least that's what I want to personally pretend is going on. With all that said, thanks for watching. This video doesn't go super in depth for any of these zombies, and I may have missed something, so please let me know if you enjoyed this in the comments, and let me know how badly I screwed something up. Regardless, this has been Creeps, and have a good one.